Hi, I'm Reverend Kalai Washo of the Fountain of Wisdom Ministries, and uh, on behalf of my wife and the entire family of the Fountain of Wisdom globally, we just want to say a few things to encourage your faith where the coronavirus that is plaguing the earth today is, is ravaging lives and all of that. You know, just last night, my wife was preaching here in our canon church, and she said something about the plague and that none of the plagues in Egypt came upon the children of Israel because they were in Goshen. I want you to know your Goshen, like she said, is in Christ. I want you to know that there's a provision for your protection from this situation, but you need to do one or two things, like stand in faith, resist the spirit of fear, and that's what this recording is about. I want it to be put out there. You can send it to your friends and all over the world so that people can be encouraged to know what to do in times like this. And I said, the present, pres the present global challenge at coronavirus has brought to the human race demands a quality of life from those of us who have a covenant with God through Jesus Christ. It's so important that we should know how to combat this situation in faith and expect to be victorious through the power of God. What manner of people ought we to be in times like this? Are we to yield to the prevailing fear of the diseases or stand against it? Are we expecting to, are we, ex are we going to expect God to protect us or just yield to the fear of it and we'll say what will be, will be? Well, I'm here to let you know we are to be the kind of people that Daniel 11:32 talks about, that they that do know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. The second part of that verse 32 says, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. I want you to know that these are the times where, yes, we need to abide by hygiene, hygienic laws that have been given. We need to abide by the laws of our respective governments around the world, but we shouldn't do it in fear. And that should we become victims of our circumstances, or we can be victors, because that's who we are born to be in Christ. So Daniel 11, 32 tells you that. These are the days that those that know their God shall do great exploits. You know, this is the time you can preach the gospel to somebody more. This is the time you can send links to them that will help them to know that there is a God in heaven. That's why when you read the Old Testament, Moses would say so that they would know that there is a God who, who owns the earth. There is a God of Israel. There is a God in heaven. I want you to know this is not the time to fold your arms, play the victim, and fear and wonder what's going on. I'm here to let you know something is going on. And like the prophetic people have said, the plagues that are coming this is not the end of it. I remember Apostle Williams, when he was in our church, he said some things about the kind of things that will happen on the earth this year, and we never thought it was going to happen so soon, but it has started. So I want you to prepare yourself to be victorious. I want you to prepare yourself to be more than a conqueror that you are born to be. I want you to take note of the fact that this can be a time of the downfall or the falling down of many, but it can also be the time of the rising of many. And that's why the Bible says we should not fear the affair. We should not call the conspiracy what they call a conspiracy. We should not yield to the spirit that prevails around us. Yet rather, we should yield to faith. It's amazing that Jesus predicted this in Matthew 24. He says, uh, from verse 3 to verse 8, he says, Now as he sat at the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when all these things will be. And, his, and, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I'm the Christ, and many will deceive, me, and will deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See to you that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Well, I'm here to let you know pestilences are, are, are like a plague, and it can mean anything from coronary virus to whatever you have. And so these are the things that Jesus said will happen, but they're, and they're happening right now. We're really in the end times, and these things are happening all around us. But I want you to know God has a program for deliverance for you and for your safety, even in times like this. And the text I want to use to share with you is a very popular Psalm 91. I want you to use this Psalm to pray over your family, Pray over yourself, pray over your family, over the region where you are in. Use Psalm 91. And what does it say? It says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I like that. 
What is the secret place of the Most High? What is the shadow of the Almighty? If you're born again and you are in Christ, you are in that place. In Christ is the secret place of the Most High. You see, a lot of people do not know that. In Christ is the secret place of the Most High. What do I mean by that? Jesus said, I am in the Father. The Father is in me. And when we believe in Jesus, Jesus said he will come in and the Father, he and the Father will come in and dwell with us. And talks about those who love God and all of that. So you need to get your heart right and make sure you are loving God because in Christ is the secret place of the Most High. He said, he who dwells in that secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, this is where responsibility comes. You see, a lot of times when we understand and when we think about our Christian faith, we see it as a religious obligation to just do certain things like go to church, read your Bible and pray. But there's more to it. It's supposed to be a relationship with God. It's supposed to be a time of relationship where you and the Father, because that's what God had in mind when he sent his son to create a family on earth whereby people whose hearts have been changed, whose lives have been affected, by their faith in Jesus Christ because they believe and receive him as their Lord and Savior, then they have a father-son relationship with the Father God. And this is one of the responsibilities that go with it. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. That's a provision. What's the responsibility? I will say of the Lord. In other words, it's not automatic. Some people who are believers may not know how to position themselves for what God has made available. To, ex to be experienced in their lives. He says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Why is that important? Because we know that the laws of faith are universal. One of the laws of faith is that you will have what you say. You know, because the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. So that means that if you're born again, you got born again because you confessed Jesus as the Lord of your life. That's why if you read Romans 7, 10, it says if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. So that tells me that the law of faith has to do with the speaking of my mouth and the believing of my heart. So if I believe, that's why Jesus taught it again in Mark 11. Say, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. That tells me that there is a law of faith. People don't know that God governs the whole universe, whether it's the spiritual realm, the natural realm, the mental realm, emotional realm, by laws. And that's why a lot of people find it difficult to work with God because they think, why is God allowing this happen as if God just sat in heaven and is, you know, dwindling his thumbs? If anybody goes to a high-rise place and falls off, and the law of gravity acts against the person. People will say, why did God allow the person to fall? Hey, he set the law into motion. That person disobeyed the law of gravity. So a lot of things are happening on earth today that, yes, Satan is involved. Yes, God himself has predicted that these things will happen in the end times through his son Jesus. And now we are here facing this situation. What manner of people ought we to be? We ought to be people who understand what God is doing. We ought to be people who understand what Satan wants to see done. And we have to be people who can navigate through the two and take our stand so that what God wants done can be done in our own lives. And that's what this is about. I want to encourage you to say of the Lord, he is your refuge, your fortress, your God, in him you will trust. Then he goes on to say, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Hallelujah. He will cover you, he shall cover you with his feathers, under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. And you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Can you see another thing again? You shall not be afraid. You see, that's why when you read Psalm 23, I think it is. Psalm 23 talks about, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You see, there's always the role that the man uh, the human being has to play in everything God does in their lives. And that's why a lot of people don't do what they are supposed to do, and then they wonder why God is not letting or allowing some things to happen. Learn today. You are a character, you are, you are made in the image of God, you have become a child of God by faith in Christ Jesus. There are some things you need to do. Number one, you need to say. Number two, you will not be afraid. These are choices we make. You know, of all that God created on earth, the human being is the one that has a power of choice. And God honors your power of choice. He will never take that from you. That's why it says, he says, you, you will not be afraid of the terror by night. He says, he shall cover you, you see, honor is when you shall take refuge. 
and you will not be af- you will not be afraid of the terror by night. So, number one responsibility, I will say. Number two responsibility, I will not be afraid. This is what I'm trying to encourage you to do today: to say and not be afraid. So let's go on. He says, "You will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday." Well. A thousand will fall at your right, ten thousand at your left. It shall not come near thee. Say amen. The thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near thee. God himself is promising you that. It will not come near you. And you have to take your place by playing your part so that his own part can be executed in your life. He says it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. I declare that to you prophetically, that if you are born again and you are listening to this, no evil shall befall you. No evil shall befall you and no plague shall come near your dwelling. I like that. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample on the foot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I want you to anchor yourself in this Psalm 91, in this season we are in. And the way to anchor yourself is to just go through it like I've just done with you and repeat the things that are said there. And you just build your faith, your conviction, your commitment to doing your part. What happens if you find a symptom rise on your body? Resist it. Because God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. What is the enemy using today to spread this disease? Shall I tell you? The spirit of fear. There's this principle, another law, in the Bible, that whatever you fear the most will come upon you. That's found in the book of Job. Job chapter 3, verse 25. He said, for the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. What am I trying to let you know? That faith and fear, they are uh, 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 laws in reverse. They operate by the same principles. Faith believes what God says and expects it to come to pass. Fear believes what Satan says and expects it to come to pass. So you have a choice. It's either you are, because faith is to God, what fear is to Satan? So deal with the spirit of fear. How do you deal with that spirit? You can bind the spirit of fear. You can cast it out of your soul. Or you need to take your stand and say, you know what? I will not yield to the spirit of fear. You have to do that. Because if you want to know what is spreading that disease more than anything else, it's the information about negativism and the fear that people have put and added to the spread of it. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the virus is not as dangerous as they've made it to look. I'm not saying the virus is not killing people because, you know, I hear things going on around. But I am saying that you can keep your heart from being open to the spirit of fear. You can guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. So don't let that fear get into you. For in 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I want you to know you have the spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. And the spirit of fear did not come from God. It's not from God. Because you are, the enemy, you see, people don't know it, but fear, once you yield to it, you have given permission for that thing that you fear to come upon you. So, but what if you know that it's terrible? Fine, it is terrible, but your God is greater. David faced Goliath in the face of fear and impossible situation. And David still overcame Goliath without letting Goliath's fear and intimidation stop him from attacking Goliath. What does that tell me? That the God we serve, he's the greater one. He's the greater I am that I am. He's the ancient of days. Nothing meets him unawares. So you need to know who you're dealing with. No one that Jesus, when he was teaching us to pray, said, pray our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, somebody was telling somebody else that if God is in heaven and he can hear your voice on earth, then he's almighty. (laughs) 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. There is nothing that can touch God, and there is nothing that happens on earth that God never knew about it. So let's get our confidence in place. The law of faith has to do with believing in your heart and confessing with your lips. Whatever God's word says to you in the Bible, believe it, confess it, and fear has to do with believing the lies of the devil and speaking fear through words to establish our hearts in fear. Remember that as we read that night, Psalm 91, it says, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's a provision right there. That's a provision. That means that you are not ready to die until you are ready to die. It says, I will satisfy. So if you're not satisfied, satisfied, keep living. Nobody should terminate your life before you are ready to go. And you see how that works. If as a person you have yielded to the spirit of fear and you've become a, with a sense of victimhood and then you are now ready to die if the disease hits you, you know what you've just done? You have given permission to the spirit of death to take you out. And that's what people don't know. You've given permission. You yielded to the fear. You thought in your mind, well, and then you yield to the spirit of fear. You've given the permission. If you die at that point, you wouldn't know it, but you permitted it. That's why it says with long life, I will satisfy him. So if you're not satisfied, stay alive. And if you're satisfied, we'll see you in heaven when we get there. So I'm trying to let you understand that there are laws that govern the realm of the spirit. And I want you to know that you can overcome the spirit of fear by your prayer life, by your decision, by your conviction, and by you meditating more in the word of God, not in the fears that they send out. Keep your heart with all diligence, so that it comes to the issues of life. In Romans 8:28, the Bible says, For we know that all things work together for the good of those who are the called according to his purpose and those who love God. So even this negative situation, God can work something good for you. What does that mean? It means you can stay at home and feed your faith on the word of God. It means you can send links like this one to your friends and they can get born again. It means you can touch more lives because everybody's meant to be kept at home now. So through social media, your influence in touching more lives can increase. It means that you can do a lot of great exploits for God. But you know what it also means? It means you can know God the better, the more. Because you can spend time in the Word, meditation, study, praying, and really developing your confidence in God's ability to supply your needs. Really developing your confidence in God's ability and power to meet every need in your life. This is what I want you to do. That as you stay indoors, don't stay indoors bemoaning your situation. Don't stay indoors wondering, oh God, what shall we do? Stay indoors building your faith because this coronavirus shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass sooner than people think. This coronavirus shall come to pass, but let it be an eye-opener for you that this is a season for you to develop your faith. This is a season for you to develop your intimacy with God, your intimacy with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is inside you. And he's waiting for you to make the right decision so that his power can come. I want you to know that just like the power of God protected the children of Israel in the land of Goshen, and none of the plagues of Egypt came upon any of them, same way God can protect you. And I want to encourage you also to break bread more often. Because in this season, you need to remind yourself that Jesus bore your sin, bore your sickness, and by his stripes, you were healed. You don't need to wait until they are sick. You need to keep breaking bread regularly so that you can know that you are the healed of the Lord and your breaking bread is to maintain your divine health. Just like when in the days of Moses when he said they should put the blood of the lamb on the lintel, on the lintel of their houses. That when they, when, he says, when I see the blood, I will pass over. I love that. What that tells me is that if you and I will break bread regularly, whenever the spirit of death comes, the blood of Jesus will speak on our behalf. And it will deliver us from the spirit of death. So I want you to know that we're dealing with spiritual warfare right here. We're not just dealing with coronary disease alone. We're dealing with spiritual warfare. And it's happening. Hello, somebody. So as we round up these thoughts, I just wanted to encourage you that this is a time to break bread. This is a time to feed your faith. This is a time to be prayerful. This is a time to commune with God the Father by his spirit. And let him speak into your heart, confidence. Let him let you know what you shall do, can do at this time so that you can take advantage of this time of isolation or time of being indoors to rise up so that when the next season comes upon you, you are prepared for God's new season in your life. I want you to know it's a great day and God is doing something wonderful.
So until I come your way next time, I want you to maintain your faith in God. Get rid of the spirit of fear. Feed your heart on the word of God. Confess what God says about you. You are who God says you are. You have what God says you have and you can do what God says you can do. It's all yours. But if you don't make the choice to enjoy what God has given you, then don't blame God. But I believe that for you to listen to this, you have made up your mind to enjoy what God has given you. So on behalf of myself and my wife and the entire family of Phantom Wisdom Ministries worldwide, I want to say welcome to the new phase of development. Welcome to the new phase of growth. Welcome to a new dimension of power that is going to be made manifest in your life because you have gotten rid of the spirit of fear, you are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, and you are pressing in to all that God has for you. Until I come your way next time, this is Reverend Conlight Wosho saying, God bless you real good. And stay strong. Don't give up. Don't be a victim. You are more than a conqueror. God bless you.